And thank you for so, much, so much for joining us. Welcome to Mindful Trinity. I'm your host, Vaishnavi Charan. So today's topic is a bit sensitive um, because a lot of people, they choose not to talk about it. Um, well, for personal reasons. It may be um, they're actually ashamed or afraid um, of sharing something so personal. But we actually uh, took this opportunity to make people or make society aware of um, what's going on. And if they are experiencing it, how to handle it, how to deal with it. And also if someone else is experiencing it, how to uh, take care of them. And uh, because they, they are people that actually go through something uh, with, I mean, something such as mental illness, they're very sensitive and they're very fragile. So again, welcome uh, to Mindful Trinity. So our topic is on mental illness. And our speaker for today is going to be discussing her personal journey with mental illness. So I actually took off um, the definition of mental illness from Google. So as for Google, um, they say it's a condition which causes serious uh, disorder in a person's behavior or thinking. So my thoughts, I actually add, my add on to this is, it is a serious condition and if diagnosed with such a condition, one should not be ashamed. They should be more honest with themselves and um, also seek help if it's, if it's um, more of a medical, or maybe if it's actually um, more serious and they see it's actually serious, then they should seek medical help. So it's also good to have someone to talk to, maybe a close friend or a close family member, someone that you can trust. Um, and you know, and if it's actually, um, as I said, if it's more, if it's medical, medically related, then there will be um, medication, you know, that'll be um, for you. So also, um, I'm actually doing this to break the stigma around mental health challenges. It's basically to empower ourselves and others to get informed, seek help when needed, and encourage open-mindedness. Um, so um, let me give you a little bit of uh, background of our guest for today. Firstly, she's a mom of a beautiful little girl. She's a wife a career woman, a friend, sister, daughter, also a student. She's currently uh, finishing a qualification in HR and she's a practitioner of Bhakti Yoga. Uh, Bhakti Yoga entails mantra meditation, it's actually more of sound vibrations. So our guest for today is a very special guest. She's also a friend of mine. Her name is Malini Vadivelu. So welcome, Malini. We are so grateful that you um, you are so brave to take this opportunity and share um, all of your insights and knowledge with with regards to your your experiencing uh, experiences. Sorry, with mental health. So thank you so much for joining us. And um, yeah, again, we're grateful for you. Thank you, Vaishnavi, and thank you for the opportunity. Okay, awesome. So um, to start off, I actually would like to ask you, what are the signs and symptoms of mental illness? Um, well, with me, the my signs and symptoms were um, feeling very low for a long period of time, sometimes a week, um, not being able to sleep, um, losing interest in things that you normally would do like if you like listening to music or watching TV, um, withdrawing or from your friends and family, um, emotional outbursts, um, finding, not wanting to go to work, not wanting to be with people, um, being stressed, being paranoid. Um, it's the, the feeling, feeling hopeless, like, the world will be better without you. Thoughts of suicide. And basically things like getting out of bed become difficult. Okay. Thank you for that. Yeah, it's actually a quite a, um, 
a dark period that one goes through when yes. they're going through something like that. Um, yes. Correct. So, yeah. So when exactly did you realize that you were experiencing these challenges? Um, and when did you notice it was a problem and that you should seek professional help? Um, I was actually a teenager, uh, quite young at 14. That's when I had my first mental breakdown. Um, I think I was under a lot of stress. We moved schools a lot. I was bullied because I was always a new child, new kid in school. And um, because I did well in school and I, I just turned up there, I think I wasn't very famous for that. And I didn't know what was happening and I was losing sleep. And so I was, my parents admitted me into hospital, into a psychiatric facility and I was put on medication. Um, but I took the medication and as soon as I got better, I stopped taking it. In terms of, and so, uh, sorry, sorry, I, I kept you were done there. Yeah. Sorry about that. I actually thought you were done there. But you can carry on. And then I just kept having breakdowns and it was a cycle. I got better and I stopped the medication because I seriously didn't think I had a problem or maybe I was in denial that I had a problem. Thank you so much for that. Yes, it's actually um, quite, it's actually very important to be truthful to yourself. And I think that's when you, you be able to help yourself and seek the, uh, the, the correct help that you should be, that I mean, that you should deserve. In, in terms of a support structure, how important is it to have a strong support structure? And can you please give us an idea as to what type of support a person with mental illness um, should be receiving? A good, strong support structure is very, very important, especially from your family. If at first you can't, uh, the, the problem can't be sorted out within your family, then you seek medical advice in terms of a psychologist or a psychiatrist. A uh, psychiatrist might recommend medical help because remember depression is a chemical imbalance where your serotonin levels your dopamine levels are really low that cause you to feel like that so the only thing that will help you are, are med med medical medical things like antidepressants and they call them ssris and um, sometimes it's uh, for a short period and sometimes it's chronic, like I am. And um, you need, it's an ongoing thing. You need to be with your psychiatrist and psychologist all the time because it, it doesn't go away. Sometimes depression is caused by post-traumatic stress disorder. Maybe you've been through things in your childhood that caused you trauma that led to your depression that you need, get you, that you need to keep talking about and always there something always triggers it and um, you have to keep talking about it and your family need to understand your illness in order to understand you and how to understand how to handle you thank you so much for that knowledge i mean i, I think it's uh, very important for your family to actually understand you if they don't understand you it's actually very difficult as well yeah. Um, so also to our audience, if um, you can hear us or if you're having difficulty in hearing us, please um, let us know um, because sometimes there is a delay and I would like to know if you are experiencing that. Um, okay, we can actually carry on and we'll just double check to see with our audience whether they're having any difficulty on their side. And um, how does one uh, notice these signs and symptoms in somebody else? Because I mean, we actually do know how to recognize these symptoms um, in ourselves now that you told us. But if yeah. someone else is going through it, someone that we're close to, sometimes maybe it could be a, a friend, a very close friend, um, and maybe they're very good at hiding it. But how can you notice it in them? 
Um, you notice them not being so social, withdrawing, maybe losing weight, um, not coming to work, missing a day here and there, um, canceling social appointments. Um, maybe they, they, their appearance is, some people when they're depressed, their appearance is very disheveled. If you are normally a neat person, then all of a sudden you don't care, your, your hair is unkempt and your clothes is not neat or not ironed. Or, and um, you'll see that they uh, usually stress, more stressed out than usual or, yeah, those are the signs. Sometimes the, pe the people closest to you can't see those signs because you would put them all the time. But a person from afar will be able to see. Okay. Thank you so much for that. It's actually, um, um, I, well, I think for me, um, to actually have all of this information or this knowledge, it's much more easier to help someone if they're going through this, especially in society, because we don't know what someone is going through. And I think that it's also very, very good for us to know how to treat the next person because lots of people have their own challenges. And sometimes, like you mentioned, um, they have emotional outbursts and all of that. So it's always nice to take a step back and find out um, how can we help the person. But what if the person does not want to get help? Because I mean, at that time, they're very sensitive and they don't want to get that help. Yes. Um, you can always just listen. Tell them you're there to listen. Sometimes someone just needs someone to listen to them and not say anything or be a shoulder to cry on or be someone there when they want to vent because the last thing someone who's in an emotional state like that wants is unwarranted advice from someone that hasn't experienced what they are going through. Um, and yeah, but like if someone is suicidal and they tell you that, then you have to take action. You can't keep that to yourself. It's for their own good. And um, yeah, you have to get them medical help. So, but if they want to talk to you in confidence and they're comfortable with you, then my advice would be is to be there for them. Let them cry, let them say whatever they want to say, um, no matter how silly it may sound. And just be empathetic. Okay, thank you for that. So what advice do you have for someone experiencing these sort of challenges? Um, and also, do you have any advice for friends and family? Um, I mean, for those that are actually experiencing these symptoms. I know you did mention to being there for, for, peer, for uh, those that are experiencing it. But do you have any further advice for them? Okay, for people who are feeling depressed, um, know that you're not alone. Um, if you have somebody that you can trust that won't exploit you and your uh, feelings, speak to them, speak to somebody. Don't keep your feelings bottled in you because it will just, um, it'll burst out in some other form, like a, like a breakdown, like a, a seizure or um, a panic attack. Um, there's so many different ways that stress and depression and anxiety can affect you and your, your mental health. So I would suggest always talk about something. You will know yourself better than anyone else. Seek medical advice, seek professional help. As for the family, um, be patient. It's a sensitive illness. It's more, it's different than a normal illness. Uh, when people hear mental illness, the first thing that comes to their mind is, okay, this person is losing their mind or they're mad. And um, that's not the case. Mental illness is a chemical imbalance. It's a, something that's real. It's happening in your brain that you can't control. Um, my coping mechanisms uh, were doing things that I enjoy. I enjoy arts and crafts. So I do 
adult I have adult coloring book that I take out my stress on. Um, also, I meditate, mantra meditation. I pray a lot. And now, uh, from not speaking at all about my feelings, I'm more open and raw about it because it's who I am. And whatever I've been through it has made me strong and it has made me be the person I am today. So it's, it's actually putting my depression behind me. I am finally accepting that I have an illness and uh, working together with my psychologist, psychiatrist, with the medication that I'm having, uh, seeing how it's working for me, I'm at the best place that I have ever been. And I don't want to go down that path again. So I have to listen to my doctors and behave. <laughs> yeah, wow. I'm actually very, very uh, proud of you. And yes, you have come a long way. Thank you. Yeah, since I, I first met you and over the years, you grew as a person as well. And now with you coming, um, coming to terms with your story and sharing it with, with the world. Um, yeah, I actually commend you for that. So, Thank you. so to recap our conversation for today, we actually came to the end. Can you believe it? Time really flew. <laughs> wow, really flew. Yeah. So there are some messages for you on, um, on my page. I'll go back to, re to read it. I also asked if anyone has questions for Malini, you could actually type it out and she would have answered it for you. But um, I guess everyone is here just to support you. And um, yeah, so thank you for that. So yeah, just to recap, I tried to take down notes as you spoke, but there was a lot of information and all of them were actually quite informative and beneficial yeah. to ever may need to hear this. So you mentioned about the low energy when, when you're experiencing something like this, you have low energy, yeah. loss of interest in things that you may love and emotional outbursts. And it's actually very good you mentioned all of these because all of us in some point in our life, we experience these. And people that are close to us don't know how to understand us. They may take it as um, an offense to them. They may think it's, all, it's about them. So guys, if you have anyone in your family that's going through this, it's actually not about you, it's about them. They are going through some sort of challenge and they may need our help to uh, you know, actually overcome that, like what Malini just mentioned. So you, you mentioned that you actually went through this from a teenager and that is actually the most difficult years, I would think, as a teenager, because you, there's so much of things happening. You're not a, a child anymore, but you are still a child. You're not an adult as yet, but you're actually getting that. I mean, you're actually yeah, moving to that. Adolescent. Age. Yes. Yeah. Um, so you're actually getting molded into the person that you want to be. Um, and you're also taking advice from your peers, from your family. You may even get, uh, you may actually go the wrong route or you may go the right route, depending on your association as well. So you also mentioned um, you would need, a person that's going through this, they need a good support structure, especially from family. Also, yes. if, if it's more uh, a medical situation, psychologist and a, psychi a psychiatrist is very, very much needed. You mentioned about the, the withdrawal symptoms. And yeah, again, sometimes uh, we, we're not so attuned with our inner self that we forget, you know what, I actually need help. That is why I'm feeling like this. So it's always nice to reflect and see how you're feeling, feel how you're feeling. So you actually can feel these emotions. And it's always nice to feel these emotions, deal with it and let it go. And like what you, you mentioned that you have professionals helping you in your journey, which is very, very, uh, yeah, I'm actually very proud again, very proud of you. <laughs> Thank you. You also mentioned just being there for someone experiencing these symptoms. Again, it's something so small to be there for somebody. We take it for granted that it's always good to be there for one another, especially during this COVID um, journey of ours in South Africa and the rest of the world. 
a lot of people have, have been experiencing these symptoms. Some of them were alone, they never had the family support. Some of them did have family support, but they still felt alone. And by hearing talks like these, making it more, um, becoming more vocal about these, I think we can actually help society and the world to heal together. You, just, you mentioned a few more. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to actually remember everything, but as I said, there was a lot of information. Um, so know that you are not alone and don't bottle your feelings. Bottling your feelings is actually the most unhealthy thing that you can do to yourself. It's very good to let go, let it out, speak to someone. Um, it's like, how could I say it? You're having a, um, maybe a pot full of water and when the water is filling in the pot, it actually does stay stable. But when it overflows, you're actually getting all of that. Information is still staying in there, but it's actually overload. So it's always good to actually offload all of that information or the feelings, the emotions. Like Marlene mentioned, she actually has a hobby, something that she loves, the art and crafts. Everyone has something totally different. Some of them actually have music. Some of them, um, some of them have sport. Um, you know, anything of that sort. So it's always good to have a release mechanism. So again, thank you so much for today. I'm going to see if I've, we've got any of our viewers. 